In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about RFC 1945. RFC 1945 is the first RFC uh, re request for comment that defines the hypertext transfer protocol. So in order for all of these systems on the World Wide Web to understand each other, they all need to be speaking the same language. They all need to be doing the same sorts of things. They need to have the same structure to the requests, the same structure to the replies. If we don't have a standardized format of how this is all happening, then there's no way for each unique system to be able to build on top of the World Wide Web, build uh, requests, so for instance, a web browser, being able to facilitate specific requests to some remote server, um, unless it is all standardized. And the way that HTTP was first standardized and continues to be standardized is through RFCs. And the very first one that standardizes the HTTP protocol is RFC 1945. This lays out exactly what it is that the hypertext transfer protocol is, its purpose, um, and exactly or specifies exactly how that protocol functions. So the abstract for the hypertext transfer protocol is that the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, is an application level protocol with the lightness and speed necessary for distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems. It is a generic stateless object-oriented protocol which can be used for many tasks to, such as name servers and distributed object management systems through extension of its request methods commands a feature of HTTP is the typing of data representation, allowing systems to be built independently of the data being transferred. HTTP has been in use by the World Wide Web Global Information Initiative since 1990. This specification reflects common usage of the protocol referred to as HTTP 1.0. The rest of RFC 1945 goes on to define exactly the structure of an HTTP request, an HTTP reply, as well as various properties and thoughts surrounding HTTP. It is very precise and any server wishing to facilitate HTTP 1.0 requests is uh, effectively commanded to follow this document that, that lays out exactly what HTTP is. In some sense, there is no HTTP without this exact specification for what HTTP is. Um, and additionally, on the client side, if a browser wants to be able to talk to servers that are facilitating HTTP requests, it also needs to follow exactly this document to be able to properly speak HTTP so that we can have all of these clients, all of these servers, and they can all talk to each other in a standardized way. So let's go ahead and look at what this uh, HTTP protocol looks like exactly. So uh, a simple HTTP request looks something like this. We send out some data over the internet, as we discussed in the internet lecture video. We have some ability to transmit data to a remote system. And now we have this application layer protocol, HTTP, and we want to send a message, in this case, get slash HTTP 1.0. And the server knows when it gets this, uh, depending on how it's implemented to facilitate that resource request, but we can imagine this simple example. It replies HTTP 1.0 200 OK. And we're going to look into exactly what this means. So let's start by looking again at this request. What is this request that our uh, system is sending out to this remote system? What does this mean? What is it? What is the structure of it? What does it mean? Well, the structure of it, as the RFC defines in section 5.1, uh, this top line that we're looking at is this request line. And a request line is made up of a few things. It is made up of a method, followed by a space, followed by some request URI, followed by a space, followed by an HTTP version, followed by a control line feed. Um, and then if we want to look specifically at this get, right? So the get is our method. This is saying, um, this is the action we're taking against the web server. We'll look a little bit more at that um, later on. Um, so some of these method options are the ability to get something, head, and post. Uh, there's other ones, but this is what RFC uh, 1945 defines. And uh, this is what we're specifically going to be looking at in this lecture. 
So the next thing is a request URI, so in this case a slash, and we'll look a little bit more at it in the uh, remainder of these lectures. And then we have our HTTP version. So again, the RFC is very specifically defining this, and in this case, defining HTTP 1.0. So it's very common for a protocol to say exactly what protocol it is speaking, what version it's speaking, and this allows us to have um, the server, when it gets our networked request, it knows that I am in fact making an HTTP request. It can kind of confirm that through this. And more specifically, I'm making a 1.0 request. Further RFCs go on to define, for instance, HTTP 1.1 or HTTP 2.0, and they all have differences with them. So it's important to have a versioning within our request um, so that it knows kind of what version of the protocol I'm speaking in case changes are made. Um, so now let's take again a look at this HTTP response. So in this HTTP response, we're saying HTTP 1.0, 200, okay. So what does that mean? What is the breakdown of that? Um, what this is, is a status line. So this status line is again composed of an HTTP version. We're kind of mirroring what the, uh, the client sent to us. It said, hey, we're speaking HTTP 1.0. The server is replying, hey, I'm also speaking HTTP 1.0 um, in this HTTP version. And then we go on to give a status code, which we'll learn a little bit more about in the uh, follow on uh, in the next couple of slides. And then we give a reason phrase. So this status code stuff uh, is basically saying, um, okay, you asked me for this resource. Uh, what is the status of taking this action? You, you were asking for, you're saying, hey, give me this slash thing get slash, what does that mean and how am I replying to you? So the status code definitions tell the clients um, what the server thinks about that request effectively. So um, if the service code or the status code rather starts with a one, so a one XX uh, status code, that means informational. Um, it's not used, but reserved for future use if the future HTTP protocols choose that they want to uh, use that. On the other hand, a 2xx uh, status code implies success. So this is the common response, at least certainly when there's a successful request being made. It says, hey, something was successfully uh, received. It, we understand what you're saying. We accept what you're saying. Um, for instance, maybe we, again, we're, we're asking for some cat.gif. We might return a 200 uh, status code basically saying, okay, yep, I got you. Here's your cat. It was a successful request and then uh, the following data after, as we'll kind of see further on in the, the structure of these requests and replies, um, it was successful. On the other hand, a 3xx status code is a redirection. So this gives HTTP servers the ability to have a layer of indirection. So if we ask for some uh, resource, the server might choose to reply and say, okay, what you're saying is a valid request, but Actually, what I'm going to need you to do, client, is I'm going to need you to take another action. I'm going to need you to um, make another request to me if you really want that to be fulfilled. I might say, um, hey, give me cat.gif. Um, and for some reason, I mean, it's kind of up to the server. This is just the generic protocol and servers and their uh, functionality that they're taking get to build upon this to choose really is what they want to do. Um, I might request cat.gif and it might re redirect me to dog.gif and say, you know, you're asking for a cat, but you know what, I'm actually gonna tell you, if you really want something, I can only give you a dog.gif and I'm gonna redirect you to that. That might be an example. And we'll see in the coming videos, examples of redirection. Um, on the other hand, a 4xx uh, status code is a client error. So this means that the request that the client made to the server is bad in some way. So for example, it might, truly just be an improperly formed request. It might say, um, hey, I see that you're talking to me, but I, you're not speaking HTTP correctly. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Or it might say, hey, you're not authorized to access that resource. So you're requesting that, but you shouldn't be requesting that because you're not authorized. Um, and a number of other client errors. On the other hand, 5xx, status code uh, means that the, the client didn't make an error, the server is making an error actually. Um, it might say, hey, I'm not available right now to fulfill that request for some reason. I'm maybe uh, 
the the server is taking on tons of requests right now it has a high load on it and it's just going to flat out tell the client i know what you asked for but i just can't do that right now it's not going to happen or um, the underlying program running might have some issue with it. it the underlying program might crash in some way and then the http server that was talking to this program might say oh, this is a disaster, something just crashed. Uh, I know that something crashed, something just terribly happened on our end. I'm just gonna go ahead and let the client know that things crashed, it's a disaster. Um, so those are server errors. And for a list of more status codes, because within each of those uh, number groups, there are kind of commonly defined and very specifically defined actually, um, status codes that relate to very specific things that now when a server returns a very specific code, the client knows how to directly interpret that. Um, and this kind of lists some of those. So for instance, a 301 says, hey, I've permanently, I'm going to redirect you. So basically suggesting to the client, um, don't ever really ask for this again, because this resource you're asking for, it's always never going to be here it's always going to be somewhere else that's kind of what moved permanently means on the other hand it might just temporarily be somewhere else the server might have a reason for saying um i would love to facilitate that request but temporarily you know if you really want that go over here but in the future i mean you could try to ask again um what you would initially eh, what you initially asked for but right now we've temporarily moved it um, on the other hand, a 401 says, hey, you're unauthorized. 403 says you're forbidden. A 404 says, hey, that resource wasn't found. Um, a 501 says, yeah, I haven't implemented that feature. Maybe in the future that will be implemented, but right now it's not implemented. So maybe try again later. Um, and the, all of these codes kind of have these standard definitions. So going back to the request method definitions, basically, so we have a request and it might be trying to get something, do the head of something, do a post something, we'll see what those look like. Um, let's see what the get request means. So the get method means retrieve whatever information in the form of an entity is identified by the request URI. If the request URI refers to a data producing process, it is the produced data which shall be returned as the entity in the response and not the source text of the process, unless that text happens to be the output of the process. So as we said before um, in the introduction to HTTP, um, HTTP is just a communication protocol. This is just how we're going to structure requests and structure replies. Um, so we could be asking for static resources, like in the case of requesting some cat.gif, or we might be requesting a resource which is backed by a program. So for instance, we might ask for the time, and that's going to fetch out to some program that knows how to figure out the time. So these resources that we're requesting don't have to be static resources. They can be resources which are ultimately backed by a program. Um, and the get method is the concept of a get method is I want to retrieve information. Um, so for instance, this is an example of a full HTTP request. So in this case, we have that request line on the top line, but we also have some additional information um, as the RFC lays out. We have these uh, header information. So in this case, we're asking for the greet resource, slash greet resource. We're communicating with HTTP 1.0, we are doing a get request. And in this case, we have a um, header that says, hey, we're talking to hello.example.com. So this is what would happen, for example, if you typed into your browser, hello.example.com slash greet. And we'll see in future uh, lecture material kind of how a URL gets broken down into a request. That'll happen in the URL lecture. Um, but let's, let's look at this get request. So when we do this, the server might reply with a status line, as we saw earlier, with this HTTP 1.0 200 OK. So we had request this greet resource, and it says, OK, here's your greet resource. Um, the content type that I'm giving you is HTML. So as we said before, uh, the World Wide Web was initially built with this concept of transporting uh, hypertext. So HTML is the hypertext markup language. So this is 
something that your browser can then go on to render in a cool way, you know, we kind of make the website look a little fancy rather than just a bunch of plain text. Um, and HTML is how we can do that and how we can start linking to other resources as we'll discuss later. Um, in this case, we're kind of operating on a character set of UTF-8, not super important right now for what that means. Um, and then the response also says, okay, so the length of what I'm about to send you is 39 characters long. The, the following data is going to be 39 characters long. So then we can see that it replies, basically, here is the result of that greet request um, with HTML, a body containing hello world. We're not super inter interested in HTML in this lecture series. We're more focused on HTTP and the underlying language, but this is the resource that we requested and the server is replying with this information. And this is kind of the basic idea of a GET request. Of course, we could request other types of things. We could request images, we could request videos, we could request uh, dynamic things like the time, we can request all sorts of things. Okay. So the head method, on the other hand, is as laid out specifically in section 8.2 of the RFC. The head method is identical to get, except that the server must not return any entity body in the response. The meta information contained in the HTTP headers in response to a head request should be identical to the information sent in response to a get request. This method can be used for obtaining meta information about the resource identified by the request URI without transferring the entity body itself. This method is often used for testing hypertext links for validity, accessibility, and recent modification. Okay, so what does that look like? So instead of saying get slash greet, in this case, we're doing head slash greet. And in doing so, what happens is we get all of that header information, so the content type and the content length, but it does not tell us the actual hello world as was done in the get request. The, the body of the response is left out. And the reason you might want this, as the RFC said, is that you might just be interested in seeing, hey, does this resource exist? Or let's say that we're about to pull down a massive resource. Let's say we're about to, um, we're expecting a full video response and we want to see meta information about that video without just pulling down the entire video. Maybe we want to check, hey, how big is this video? What is like the length of this response that's about to come to me? Um, we might do a head request to see, can I even, is my browser and my system even going to be able to download a file that large? Just as a, as a basic example. Um, it gives us the metadata of the, of the resource. Okay. So the final one that we're looking at, and there's a number of others, but the, this RFC specifically lays out get, head, and post. Uh, the final one is post. And the post method is used to request that the des destination server accept the entity enclosed in their request as a new subordinate of the resource identified by the request URI, URI in the request line. Post is designed to allow a uniform method to cover the following functions annotation of existing resources, posting a message to a bulletin board, newsgroup, mailing list, or similar group of articles, providing a block of data such as the result of submitting a form to a data handling process, extending a database through an append operation. So whereas the get and head requests are allowing us to kind of get a resource, pull down a resource and get the, the metadata about that resource, um, post, on the other hand, allows us to kind of start pushing data instead at the server. So get allows us to kind of, at, at its core, get is pulling information, pulling a resource um, from the remote server, whereas post is either pushing data to that remote server or um, interacting with a resource on a remote server or um, just kind of taking more action on a resource. And it's really up to, again, the specific program, the specific app web application that's running on this web server. Again, HTTP is just a language for speaking. And this is what the, the post method is traditionally used for, is kind of interacting with some resource, pushing data to the web application. So as an example of this, 
This is what a full HTTP request that contains a post might look like. So in this case, we're posting to the greet resource. Again, we're speaking HTTP 1.0. We're talking to host hello.example.com. Um, in this case, we, just as in the get request, have a content length. So we saw before that when we did a get request, that response had a content length. In this case, our request has a content length. And we're saying in this case that we have a content length of 11. So here we say, okay, I'm pushing to you some content type of application X WW form URL encoded. And we'll kind of see a little bit more what these content type things mean in future lecture videos. Um, but in this case, we're doing this form URL encoded thing. And you can see that in the same way that before with a get request, we had data coming to us. Now we're sending data out. And in this case, we're sending the data name equals Connor. And this is a form URL encoded type of data that we are sending to it. So we post that, hey, name equals Connor to this greet resource. Um, the server just replies, okay, and I don't have any content to send to you, so I'm just gonna say content length zero. And then here's the interesting thing. Now, when we access that greet resource on hello.example.com, um, because of that post request, we have instructed the web application that of some functionality. Again, HTTP is just the protocol. It's the language of speaking to the server. It's really up to the functionality of the server for defining what we're doing with this data. This is the language, this is the protocol. There's some application that's just speaking through this language and protocol that determines what's really gonna happen here. But we can imagine a simple example of when we are posting to the greet resource that we're changing who we're greeting. So in this case, now we request the greet resource again. And instead of saying, hello world, now it's gonna say, hello Connor. So in doing so, our post request manipulated the server in some way. It manipulated this greet resource so that future requests to this uh, greet resource now say hello Connor. And you could imagine posting something else and then getting something, getting uh, that resource again and it constantly changing. And this is how um, the World Wide Web can be kind of this information distributing system that kind of serves as a communication method, right? You can imagine some chat application that's built on top of HTTP where I'm posting my messages um, to some resource that identifies who I want to be talking to and then they could be getting those uh, resources to get those messages. And you could have a protocol or you could have a web application built on top of HTTP that is using all of these post requests, using all these get requests, and these are kind of um, allowing us to have a web application built on top of HTTP.